Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today we're going to be checking out something that's a little different. Uh, this isn't actually a thematic cohesion of bands. It's actually just going to be stuff that YouTube has recommended me. I picked 10 of the most popular, you know, top of the algorithm stuff, top of the front page. I put them into the Patreon and they, uh, you know, picked the five based on votes that we'll be checking out this week. Uh, so instead of comment showcase, even though most of these um, are stuff that's been requested, I'm just going to be showcasing, uh, you know, the YouTube thing like this guy right here. Bam. Today's episode is Make Me Suffer Bones. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be checking this one out. And I don't know pretty much anything about this group, so I guess that's fun and scary. Usually I, you know, I, I check out the comments and I get kind of an inkling of an idea. Not today. Today's just chaos. I don't know. I'm running late. My hair's a mess. Chaos sounds like the theme for today anyway. So let's go. I can't Okay, so I said my day's been chaotic. This is kind of therapeutic to me right now. Very cool that they're swinging the eighth notes in the guitar. Lots of variety on the vocalist. You've got two or three different uh, harsh vocal styles. Drums are just going crazy. Can't say I was expecting that. Is that a distorted clean? Or is that layered? Yeah. Not a super technical song, but I mean, it's just perfectly what I need today, so I'm digging this. I love those breaks. That's a very interesting shift. We went from hyper rhythmic technical breakdown to piano. And that's just, uh, that, was, that was sharp, that was a sharp contrast. Short and sweet. Nothing wrong with that. So, uh, yeah. I uh, I really kind of had them pegged at the beginning that they were just going to be wall of sound, heavy, just, you know, brutal the whole time. And that chorus really caught me off guard. Um, yeah, that was, that was a good surprise because... You know, I went into it, I knew it was like three minutes or something like that. I knew it wasn't a, a tremendously long song. 
but uh you know it needs the break even though it's a short song you still need a bit of you know breathing time for both the song for both the listener um you know so i'm really glad that they put that in there they kind of um balanced out the hardcore and the um almost like poppiness um typical rock pop rock kind of thing that was uh, that was a really good balance on their part um nothing really overly technical to dissect um it's a fairly standard verse chorus verse chorus bridge chorus um a lot of the instrumental aspect uh the guitar the bass the drums it was rather simple um a lot of it was rhythmic based rather than melo- uh, melody based um it was really cool though i'm sure it wasn't their pr- I, well i mean maybe it was I, who am i to to say what's you know why somebody did something i don't even know these people um but the verse has a heavy swingness to the to the guitar you got that do 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 and when I do it like that, you're like, yeah, it is kind of jazzy. But then you put the distortion behind it and you, I don't know if it was digital or if they're palm muting it, but they get really sharp uh, attacks and releases on them. And it gives it this heavier edge and you really don't get that jazzy swing feel when they're playing it. But if you hum it to yourself, yeah, those are swing eights. And they're they are just, I mean, that is a jazzy, <laughs> that is a jazzy verse, even though the drums are playing straight. The singer is singing in straight eights. Uh, you know, just that guitar riff is giving it this little jazzy edge. So that was cool. Like I said, I don't know if it was intentional. I don't even know if they were doing it. It is kind of a standard, like, rhythmic-oriented guitar riff. And maybe if I went back and listened because of the sharp cutoffs, maybe it isn't as jazzy as I'm remembering it. But definitely in the moment, though, like, that's all I thought of. was like, these are swing aids. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, they have a lot of singers, though, I think. Uh, or at least a lot of people who do sing. You have the lead who does the harsh, and I think he does cleans. Or at least, like, uh, distorted cleans um, in the chorus. But then there's also uh, a pianist, keyboardist, I think. Um, it was like one shot that showed this guy. Um, and then I, I think there was a female vocalist that that they had one or two shots of the, of her singing. Um, and they don't have, I mean, it's bit parts. It's not like they're, you know, a full time second or third singer or anything like that, but it is cool that other band members are, you know, kind of jump up and say, yeah, we'll help out the vocals. We'll add some timbre to the, you know, some, some different uh blanking out on the word here different textures to the vocal style um because that's that i think that's important you can always have a single vocalist and back or double track them triple track them have them harmonize with themselves and it will sound good but i think the best vocal harmonies are when you get two different singers and their voices kind of meld together and they kind of fill in the gaps that the other one uh, you know, leaves, not necessarily in the melody or the rhythm, but just in the timbres, the textures of their voices and the way that they, you know, some, some people's voices are brighter, some people's voices are wider. Uh, even though you sing the same note, it sounds differently. And I think it's really cool when you get those voices mashing together. Um, when you have the same person harmonizing with themselves, the vocals tend to meld together into a unified sound. And not only does that make the harmony less distinct, you can't hear the distinct notes, it's more of a single sound, but I just don't think it, uh, it loses some of the richness, I guess is what I'm getting at. Um, it is raining out. All right. Uh, yeah, though, you know, just, just, this is what I needed right now. I've, my, my, I have not had time to get ready for this. I'm putting it out late. I'm recording this. Five minutes after it was supposed to be out, today's been a day. And just kind of having that just really hard rock, not too hard. You know, I, d- I didn't need any, th- I, I, I definitely was not in the mood to go about dissecting, um, 
you know, a hyper complex track. I would have done it and I would have enjoyed it, but that's not the mood I'm in right now. This was the mood I'm in. I can't necessarily say this is something that I would play all the time. I'm not like completely in love with it. I'm going to go buy their stuff. Um, but for right now in this moment, it, it just checked everything I needed. It was just this cathartic release of energy and you know, I'm going to remember that if I'm, if I'm ever just wiped out at the end of the day and I, I feel like I need to scream or whatever, I mean, make them suffer is going to be something that, that associated with that. I'll be thinking of them. I'll be like, yeah, I could check out their album. Now I'm in the mood for this. Let's go. So yeah, I mean, like I said, it's nothing, uh, nothing too technical or complex, but sometimes you just need music to, uh, you know, to, to relax to, to get rid of the aggression, just to kind of chill and, and release that tension you have. And this song, I mean, this song did it well. Plus it had some really cool bits of harmony in it. And I got to ask anybody who knows this song, knows the singer, knows the band, whatever the chorus was that two vocal lines, a harsh and a clean, or was he distorting his cleans? that much like it, it was a very fine line for me where the harshness the the crackle the fry sounded just weak enough for me to think that it was vocal compression but it was just too much I'm, I'm to the point where i'm like to the point where i'm like you know this is not vocal this is not vocal compression this is uh you know a background fry and it was it's teetering this line where i can't tell and it makes more sense to my brain to say it's two two vocal tracks but i guess it's also kind of possible that it is uh you know just the singer doing his thing and that's i mean that that bewilders me if that's true but you know, you guys have showed me some other crazy stuff that I didn't think was possible, and it was, so, I mean, I don't know, you guys gotta let me know. Hit me down in the comments, let me know what's up with this band. If there's any other tracks I should check out, I think this is their latest one, which is why it was recommended to me, but, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm interested in some more of their stuff. I think, like I said, I think they strike a fine balance between uh, poppier, catchier rock and some of the, like, post-hardcore kind of punk stuff so yeah yeah let me know if there's anything else to check out let me know about that singer and uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed this I, I i think it is a very fine song even though it is a little heavier than what i would typically listen to and while you're down there in the comments make sure you like subscribe and ring the bell you can check out my twitter or my patreon those links are in the description and i'll be back tomorrow with another youtube recommends video reaction thing uh, 5 p.m. as usual. I promise. Promise. 5 p.m. tomorrow. It's going to happen. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to. Tomorrow's just going to be a better day. <laughs> uh, so yeah, 5 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. UTC. And until then, you guys stay safe out there and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.